Today I've got a game steeped with theme. It's called Chai. And the publishers of Chai, Steeped Games, have paid me to create a little preview of what this game looks like and the very many deluxe components it comes with. Hopefully we'll have everything in frame because there's quite a bit of fun components to look at. But let's get started. Let's take a look at this game. Here's a look at the box. It's a larger box than I expected when it was sent to me. It plays one to five players around 20 to minutes to an hour. I played with two players and I have a copy with many deluxe things like I mentioned before. So we'll show those off so we get this cool game tray. All the various wooden tea components. We got the coins that the game comes with, the cardboard ones. But also these nice upgrade ones. Let's take a look at those. They get a nice weight to them. Ain't a nice sound. We got these. These are the tea cups where you fill them with tea to fulfill an order, of course. Seem like durable quality, a little squishy. So I'm not gonna break easily or anything. They got some nice ornate design on it. One for each player that's in the game. Got all the lovely game components and a nice insert to organize things. Now this piece here, you can see the indents during gameplay. You have these tiles, which look and feel like those tiles from Azul, if you have a copy or played that game. That same consistency looks like a little starbursts that you're playing with, or high chew. But throughout the game, this is always filled and it's nice with that little indent there. Real thick piece of material as well. Got the bags to shuffle up the components as well. One for these tiles and one for these. Got a thermometer here to help keep track of rounds, which comes with a little clip. So five rounds in a game. Start round one, round two, three, four, five. As I said, lots of very thematic portions, components, gameplay choices, puns are in this game. This is where you're grabbing things, the pantry. Got the player boards here. Each one has its own T type. So it's essentially the focus of that player. Functionally, besides the T type, they all have the same purpose. You have a little area to keep all your coins throughout the game. We have the game trays insert here in the box. And then all the cards, tarot size, nice quality, got that linen finish. The playmat, it's got that stitched edge, so it's not gonna fray at all. Very thick and large. Get that nice back so that as you're playing, things don't move around, you have a dedicated surface for playing. Now that we've seen everything, let's set this up and I'll go through a little bit of the game, and what it feels like. Fill this up a little bit. Now that it's all set up, the purpose of the game, the way you win, it's like most games, it's victory points. And you're getting these points by fulfilling T orders to these customers. And you do that in a few ways. So they've got the specific colors associated. You also start with your own personal reserved customers here. And you can take three actions. You can get stuff from the market, which are part of the requirements for some of these, these ingredients here. There's also other things in the pantry that are sometimes required. And you also have the color requirements. So this is a white one that requires one of these pieces and four items from the market. So on your turns, you're just trying to get these things. 
you can do one of three options. You can go to the pantry and grab three things from the pantry, put it on these plates. You can have up to six, which is why there's six spots. Then we refill it. Or you can grab randomly if you don't like what's there. Now if I have the requirements to fulfill one of my own reserved customer orders or one of the public ones, I can do that too. But I don't, so I'm gonna move on. Next player can go. Maybe they're not focused on that, they want ingredients from the market. Now you can see the market has three sections, this copper section, this silver section, and this gold section. Now the cool thing about this is if there are types touching each other that are the same, you can purchase all of that in one go. So if I want uh, the mint leaves, I grab all that are touching each other and pay for the amount in the highest costed space. So pay that. And for going to the market, I'm, I'm selling my own tea too. So I'm, every time you go to the market, you get three. So I uh, got my three paying two silver to buy those. Putting them in my space, there's 12 slots as opposed to the six available for this. So that's the max. If you go over either one of those six or 12, you have to make a choice of what you wanna keep. Now perhaps in addition to these two, I still have three coins I can pay to grab this. Pass the turn back, I don't wanna fulfill any orders yet. Now let's see, I will go for this, this, and this. Well, I've got my three, I'll replenish this, and then now I can fulfill an order. So I'm going to fulfill this one. I've got my color, that's what these tokens are for. If I was fulfilling a green one, I would just take one from my opponent and give them a coin, purchasing it, which they can't refuse. But in this case, I have white, I have a milk, and I have this. I put it in one of the teacups where I get a tip for my service, so I guess I don't get any tip this time. Some types of tips that are available are coins or extra ingredients. And I get the fulfilled order. So that's five coins and I'll just tuck that underneath face down. Now the final option you can do, you can always fulfill orders at the end of your turn, but you have the option, grab from the pantry, buy from the market, as many purchases as you want, or reserve a order. So perhaps I wanna reserve an order. I could do that by just taking it and replacing it. And in addition to taking that card, there's these special ability, ability actions here. And so I can do one of those. So I can fulfill an order with one less of these resources, pantry resources. I can reset all of one of these. So if I think I want to reset all green, I can do that. Put them in the bag, shuffle, grab things out to replace. And there's eight total abilities that throughout the game get replaced. So these all happen. So perhaps, so I think I'll go with that replace because I don't want my opponent to get a bunch of green. So those are the three options. Now the round ends when all the orders are fulfilled. There's two orders, you can see, that are possible. And when I say all orders, there's two because there's two players. If there was five players, it'd be five cups. And so it's a little bit of a race. It's either you're trying to gain a lot of coins and a lot of resources and, and go for the higher pointed options and be a little slower and have less cards, most likely. Or perhaps you're trying to get resources really quickly and buy these cheaper but lower pointed resources and therefore stealing all the possible cards from opponents. So this player, since they already have a 15 reserved and now an 11 reserved, Maybe they're going for higher pointed cards and less of them. But this is the simplicity of the game. You're just collecting the right resources, buying the cards with the right points. You get the idea of the game. So if you're a tea lover or just like games with fun components, this might be the game for you. It's on Kickstarter right now with a special expansion. 
which I actually launched in 2018 with the Kickstarter. It's been fulfilled and now they're out on Kickstarter again with their expansion. So if you like this game or like the look of it, consider checking out where you, the Kickstarter where you can get the expansion, the base game, the deluxe components as well. So that's Chai. That's Chai on Kickstarter now. Go check it out.